Okay, number nine, updates on steps being taken to address racism as a public health crisis. We said quarterly we would do an update. So, um, Mr. Jansen, I turn that over to you. Thank you. I put together a, a, a kind of a brief report of what, where we're at and where we're kind of heading with this. And just as a reminder, you know, the county board approved the racism as a public health crisis resolution August 4, 2020. So that was certainly ahead of the unfortunate civil arrest that happened in our community. But um, recognizing that uh, helped um, kind of begin to move things forward for county. So the county has formed a diversity task force. It is compromised and it is um, it has county employees participating on it that are reviewing county policies and procedures, especially when it comes to hiring and retention. I know Mr. Nelson sits on that committee, for example. They've been meeting regularly and are reporting uh, the results back to uh, Clara over in Human Resources. Um, we, Human Resources is also planning on hiring a business partner. They will be taking a position that will become vacant with the retirement. And the goal is to have that business partner be uh, have a specialty in diversity and inclusion. So each business partner right now has a specialty that they focus on. For example, Donna Esposito is the human service business partner and her uh, expertise is certainly in the, the county insurance. So this is just taking another partner and having uh, inclusion and diversity lens available. Um, recently, within the last couple of weeks, we have officially become Kenosha County. This isn't just human services. Kenosha County has become a member of the governance of Government Alliance on Race and Equity commonly referred to as GARE, the acronym there. Uh, so you'll be hearing a lot about that as we move forward. That'll be a regular part of our 90-day updates and what we're doing, uh, utilizing the tools there. For example, they have an employee survey that can uh, go out to staff to get feedback on what they're viewing uh, the county as and, and areas that we may want to adjust to programs and policies. So um, you'll be seeing a lot of information on there, and that's part of the, the next bullet about utilizing those tools available. So I would encourage you, if you wanna go on that uh, website, um, you can see the tools that are out there, the material that's written. That's just a small piece of what happens. Being part of that membership now will involve uh, twice a month meetings with other GEAR members to hear about what they're working on and how they're advancing equity uh, moving forward to give us ideas so we aren't necessarily reinventing the wheel in those areas that need to be addressed. Um, the other plan through Kosha County is to implement uh, procedures for racial equity training for all employees and certainly starting with all new hires. So that is a goal that the human resource department will be uh, working on and putting together. And then finally, uh, I mentioned the development of the Racial Equity Commission. And that's a group that will report to the County Board Executive Committee. Um, and we'll have a subgroup of which uh, Supervisor Goley and Supervisor Pomerville and Supervisor Rodriguez have agreed to uh, participate on that will begin to uh, develop the mission, goals, and membership for that uh, Racial Equity Commission. So as that gets, uh, that subgroup, um, so we have a meeting tomorrow actually to begin talking about uh, who else we can get to participate on that group. And um, we'll be moving that forward with the goal of hopefully bringing that back to committee uh, and endorsement for um, how that racial equity commission would be uh, earlier into next year. So quarter, end of quarter one, beginning of quarter two, depending on how this uh, goes. So those are just a few things that we've been working at. Um, certainly, uh, I have making this part of our regular agenda, I think makes a lot of sense. Uh, I know there's law enforcement is working on training for their folks um, that uh, I believe will begin in the first quarter of 2021, who they'll be using or, or if they're part of it, they're going to be using gear, which they'll be members of because it's a county membership. Um, I, I'm not quite sure on that. So I think they're evaluating all that as we quickly move forward with these uh, policies and procedures. So I don't know if Supervisor Goley uh, would like to add anything when it comes to the the subcommittee, but um, we're really looking forward to working with that group to help develop that mission and goals and membership for the Racial Equity Commission. I mean, just as you indicated, uh, we have a meeting tomorrow, which I hope will lead to um, solidifying the uh, the work group composition who will, it's kind of like on 
on the TV show, The Office, where you have a committee to plan a committee. Um, and so that work is going on right now. And um, ideally, after tomorrow, we'll have a lot more to report. Um, and I would really like to see some movement in the next couple of weeks toward um, pushing us toward that. Roger Palmerville, do you have anything to add? Thank you. Are there any questions? Yeah, I've got a couple of questions. Um, is the board or human services going to be made aware of who are on these boards, commissions, committees, organizations, groups, whatever? Uh, I know there's a few of them. This is going to be a standing agenda item, so we will get all that information. Correct, uh, Mr. Danson? Yes, I have no problem with that. So I, I assume in uh, Supervisor Berg, you were referring to the membership of the Racial Equity Commission? That in the diversity the group, of course. Yeah, so we're going to have that working committee that will help develop the goals and mission for the Racial Equity Committee. And the Racial Equity Commission will be an ongoing commission. It's not just a, a snapshot of 2021. It'll be something that will probably develop and have rotating membership, you know, like most commissions should. So you serve a term and then, you know, either uh, next you have to be figured out by the work group. So, yeah, we'll be including that all um, in our updates to this group. And certainly um, that Racial Equity Commission will have a strong tie back to the county board through the reporting to the executive committee. So you're going to hear probably a lot of those updates here that will be floated up to the executive committee. Um, I, I certainly am representing human services. And as I mentioned, this is a, a countywide endeavor. It's not just a human service um, uh, look at uh, equity and, and inclusion. So there'll be other, um, you'll get the human service piece of that. And then the, the the commission will be able to report back on the, the county-wide piece on that. Okay, so uh, Supervisor Gully and Pomodo, I would I would possibly suggest, um, and this goes towards the diversity task force also, we're looking at the county in terms of diversity and racial inequities and whatnot. Um, if we're worried about it possibly being an issue amongst county, amongst Kenosha County and our in our government uh, or in our employment, would it make sense then to have an outside individual to kind of auditing it, if you if you want to say, if we're talking about systemic racism and and with the possibility, not saying if there is, but it, with the possibility of there being systemic racism in Kenosha County government or employment then shouldn't we then have somebody from outside of the employment kind of auditing it? Isn't that what Gary is doing? Yeah, if I can just jump in, I know you asked that to the two supervisors, but that certainly would be a role that the Gare group could play in a function. And I think you that again? Um, the, the Government Alliance on Race and Equity, the G-A-R-E, that certainly can be a function they'll play because they're going to hold it. If we come to them and say, here's our plan moving forward and how we want to address these issues this year, um, they're going to exp they're going to be wanting us to report back our progress. And if we get stuck, they're here to say, hey, we're coming in, or we're, we're here to say, we're, we need help. We don't know how to advance this forward, or we're tripping over ourselves trying to figure out what the solution is or something to that effect. The other piece is, and, and this is something that subcommittee can look at, is that membership on that commission. I, I wouldn't envision it to be 100% county people. I, I would think there would be, as you say, maybe a, a, somebody from outside county government that would, or uh, some bodies from outside county government that could potentially be on that commission to, to continue to ask those questions and, and hold folks accountable. So, I know that when GARE was recommended um, that they are part of, they helped Minneapolis along, Supervisor Burke and uh, several other major cities. Um, so if you take a look at what they offer and how they counsel and audit, and I think it, they'll address all your questions. Okay, you kind of went fast on there. Can you say again the uh, acronym, Government Alliance? Government Alliance on Race and Equity. On Race and Equity, okay, thank you. G-A-R-E. 
But they do have an open meeting that anyone can sit on to learn about it. And right now to their website and sign up for um, what they call a new member. Or it, that, it's not a new member. It's just an introduction course on what they have to offer. And it's, a, it's about, I think it's just close to two hours. Um, so several of us did that earlier this fall just to hear what it is they can do for your community and what you need to be doing for yourself and moving this forward. So it's an informational session. It's free. As Jim pointed out, I know there's a morning session and an afternoon session twice a month. So go on the website if you're interested. Uh, feel free to sign up and listen to what they have. I actually went out to that site um, when I wrote the amendment um, to the um, civil unrest uh, resolution. And uh, I was very impressed with Gar, and uh, I think they'll, they'll really help us out. Any other or questions? I, I have one question. Uh, you're talking about different individuals being on this. Have you considered somebody from like the Kenosha School Board and maybe West of the I, the Central High School or Wilmot School Boards to be on so they would present this from a useful point? Just a thought. Great recommendations. I think um, the subcommittee hasn't met yet. So, um, and with Supervisor Goley and Palmerville both being on this call, uh, those are things that we can write down and having them start thinking about it. So they're really leading the subcommittee where they're just there for support um, and any other information they need. So it's really going to come from the supervisors working uh, to come up with those recommendations. But yeah, if you folks have recommendations on who you think are possible, uh, candidates for consideration or larger groups like that that you can, you know, reach out to. That's that's good. I think that's all what we're looking at. May, may I also respond? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have um, for the work group, we have reached out to a number of people representing um, populations and interests west of the eye. Um, we have not confirmed anyone yet, but I would I would expect wholeheartedly that we'll have at least one or two people in the work group with the, with that perspective um i have had a couple of conversations with different people um at kusd and one of the um confirmed members of the work group is an actual classroom teacher at indian trail who um i think it adds an incredible voice to what we're going to try to accomplish so we we definitely have thought through that and then I think those are also great criteria that we want to think about when we actually establish um, criteria for who would be on the commission. We'll, we'll want to make sure that we think about that as well. Thank you, Supervisor Gully. Are there any more questions? As I said, this will be a standing item on our agenda so that we can receive timely updates and then we will give um it'll be determined how it will be reported to the executive committee but i'll give quarterly updates as requested by the county board the full county board 